Hi, this is Nancy McClellan with Scrap Mania. And this video is going to be uh, the instructional video to put together this card kit that you purchased. Um, I'm gonna try to do all of this into a live mode and it's not going to be edited, hopefully. And I wanna show you, it's this is a super easy, very fast color on here. You could probably do this with any type of marker. I, again, have uh, relayed this to a Copic marker class. So I wanna show you what we're going to do on these very simple cards. This particular one here is we're just coloring the bunny and a little bit of ground there. And if you so choose on all of these cards, you can choose anything like a Stickles. I have the Nouveau uh, drops. These are the uh, White Blizzard drops here. And you could choose anything like this. Or you could put a little bit of glue and some glitter if you really want to glitter them up. But this is the first little one that we have, and we have this little bunny, and we have his snow, and you're going to have the pieces uh, already cut for you to, just to put them together. Then there's this little guard. These are all Anita Jarman uh, designs, by the way, and I did not choose to cut the uh, Anita Jarman name off for these. Now, you can if you'd like, because it's this class, I left that on there, and I just kind of hand cut around these images. Um, so this one is very simple snowman. You know, again, I, I want snowman to be a little bit of color. I particularly love B60 as my snow color, but you could use any type of a, a gray color. Uh, particularly, I would probably stick with the C series, but if you don't have those, you could use uh, another one. I have chosen to make the bunny a W, but again, if you don't have a lot of uh, different markers, you could use your W over here on um, the snowman and then choose something maybe in an E-tone for the bunny. Again, his scarf is this kind of, uh, it's the BG series, and I chose to do the background a very light and then just to match this paper. So then this is the deer, and just with a little bunny, we have a bunny to color, which again, I've made my bunnies, the W's, the entire thing on this. This I've used that BG, no, I mean the B, yeah, the B60 down here, just as kind of some snow. I chose the yellow tone uh, just to kind of emphasize a little bit more color uh, and to go with the background. And then we have some brown. I, there's a tiny bit of leaf that I just stuck some green on. And then this um, deer, he's in the, I think I put a little bit of, e, it's an E70 and a W3, which kind of made him a little pink or gray. Uh, and just to bring another gray tone in. Apologize if you hear some snoring. My dog, my St. Bernard is down there. Always when I start to record, he does this. So hopefully it doesn't get too bad. I'll have to listen back. This one is the little bunny tugging on the snowman's scarf. And again, the scarf could be any color. I I was leaning towards this background paper that I really liked that just had the snow. There's a little bit of a glitter paper here. And then we have a background and you can see that there's a little bit, if I get it at the right angle, I think you can see all the glitter there. And that's what I used with the Nouveau. Again, I just marked it on there. I will probably do one of them just to show you because they'll need to be laid out and dry. And there he, she's snoring. So then here is this card, and this is the biggest card. This is a five by seven card, and it's got several layers on it. And again, I, I chose to leave the Anita Jarman down there. You can take it off if you'd like uh, when you cut your image out. It's got several layers. There's a mylar layer, a mirrored layer, there's a wood layer, and then this layer. And then you've got your layers for your, um, you've got pieces, you can just cut around your, uh, your sentiments here. And again, you don't have to put those on there, but they were the ones, I thought they were just really, really fun. Um, and because I chose the blue sky on this one, 
I chose not to use the B60 on this. I chose to use more of a gray tone on the bunny and I mean on the snowman. And then I have the, the B60 in the snow down here. And there's, I put some dots. We have a white gel pen and some dots. So you can use gel pen to, ex, uh, gel pen to ex, you know, emphasize that. Uh, but this particular card, it's going to be, and we'll make it today, uh, I'll do it today. It's gonna look a little different because I could not get this paper anymore. So yours is going to be in this paper. And if you look at it, it does have snow uh, flakes on it. So this one is non-existent right now. So we don't have that. So we can actually start with that particular card. We can start with it first, okay? and we can color it. You've got a five by seven card base. You've got the little piece of uh, backer paper to go behind and you'll just, we'll cut that. Here are your two layers again. Um, these are going to layer and this is pretty typical on you know, all the cards. You're gonna have, you know, most of that information right there with you. So that'll go on the front of your card and then you'll, you'll cut your, um, image out when you're finished coloring it. I tried to leave them on bigger pieces of paper for you. And again, I like to have the bigger pieces of paper that way you can, um, you know, you can use some of the areas if you need to, to color. So snowman again is going to be C1. So we all can, we can pull out our C1 and we can do it now i will try let me see if i can zoom this in just a little bit for you this is the largest image that you have and i usually go ahead and i color the um this large image on there if i can stick this up here and keep it in the camera but it not be in my way too much to see one so what we're going to do here is i'm going to take this and if you have, this is where your colorless blender would probably be really, really good because this is someplace I've always talked about the fact that your colorless blender um, has a very blue cast to it. And so I'm just kind of coloring and I'm just kind of scribbling, but the, again, try to put some, some highlights and just kind of do some shadows around here. And what I'm going to do is take my colorless blender now, and I'm gonna take my colorless blender and I'm just gonna go over this again, because I've always talked about the fact that the colorless blender has a blue cast and it really isn't going to blend anything. But because we're using that C, I think it softens it out. And again, I don't care that it has um, a little bit of a splotchy color it's a snowman and it's not dry yet so it's going to get a little it'll be drier so then i've just kind of taken this i i have taken this area here and just blocked it out and again i think there's going to be some shadow and, and look i am not doing this i'm just putting a little bit of a shadow in there i think there's going to be some shadow coming down here that's a little loopy probably. And this is gonna have some shadow because that ladder, and it's kind of got some, some shadow lines. And again, there's gonna be a little bit of shadow to give you some roundness here. And a little bit up into there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna to pretty much just color all over the snowman with my colorless blender and i'm just kind of blending that in and again he's starting to look kind of lumpy snowy and that's what he what he's going to be i'm not going to worry about anything really too much in where this ladder is because those are just shadow marks and we can go back through here and do this now again i'm not super happy with the way this is looking. So I'm just gonna kinda kinda pull some lines in there. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm 
just going to color that out again and see what that does. And my dog is snoring. Okay. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to do my, I turned around there, so hopefully it didn't mess too much of your voice over there. I'm going to put a little bit of B60 back in here, and actually that could be the blue sky, but um, I, I want that to be emphasized there. So now this mouse is down here laughing. He's, he's down here, and I'm going to take the, again, it, this is just a squiggle mark up in here, and, you know, you could kind of emphasize down in there where it's going, and maybe even a little bit looks like maybe that's where the snow is over there. And then I am just taking my marker and running some lines there. I mean, that's so simple to do. And that's the snow. And again, as it dries and everything kind of mellows out, I can go back in with this marker and I can just do some. If I really want it to be, I can, again, don't forget that you can tip your marker up on its end and you get a little bit of lineage like that. And we're going to go back in at the end. This is where, when we come back in with the Nouveau, I take the Nouveau and I do that same line on there to, to create the snow, is what I'm going to, you know, put the snow in there. So, I'm, as we let that dry and we see what that looks like, I think it's, it's going to be just fine. Um, we have the most color now. Uh, we have a... We have some eyes. I made them, they're not very dark here in the image that was written, I mean, it was this, that was drawn. I have taken my, one of my black markers and I have one of these tiny little nibs on there. And I am going to, and you could do this with a Sharpie even once you're done, but I'm gonna make those very much coal eyes. And then I'm just kind of emphasizing a little bit of those things there. So I wanted to emphasize those eyes. Now let's do the carrot. Again, my typical carrot is, I must always start with a YR09, 04 and an 09 are my two colors that I use when I'm doing that. Um, it's a small enough area that, you know, we could get into doing all kinds of things, but it's not, it's not that important. Um, on the small image, I think you're getting just a little bit of color. So there's my carrot. You could use a red if you don't have, you know, some of these other colors. And I'm coming up from the bottom down here and just drawing a line. And again, that line will be just fine to go in there. And then I'm going to go through here and just give that a little soft like that. And the carrot is done. There's a line right there and you could leave that line it doesn't make that much difference. So the carrot's done. Put my markers in a little cup over here now. So now the next thing we do have is the hat. And I am going to, I made the band of the hat red just because I have lots of blue and I thought the band on the hat would be great just to be, you know, a red color. And I am going to use, um, I, I tend to use Again, my colors, I have two pretty stark color probably combinations, but I'm going to use the R14, and then I'm going to use the R29. This is a really small area, but I definitely want to get definition on his hat and make it look like it's round. So I'm taking this, and this R14 is a lighter color, and it's a little brighter. And what I'm going to do on that is I'm going to take my R29 then, and all I'm doing is going right on the edges here where it goes back to his hat. I mean, to that end, and then I'm gonna come back with my R14, and that's where I'm blending it out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have this perfect blend, but it's going to have that look of roundness there and it's going to be highlighted in the center that it's got that red tone. And you can always add more color when you're done with that. So now my snowman's hat, I chose again to keep it into the cool tones. 
So I, again, you need to have something that's black. And in order to make something black, you also have to give that highlight in there. And it might take a little bit of work, but I chose two markers, which were C5 and C8. And so first I'm going to use my C5. And I'm going to color the edge here. And then I'm going to go back here and color the edge on the back of the hat. Now you can see I left an opening there in the middle and you don't have to color everything right away. Then I'm going to go with my C8 and I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to color down the side and I'm just kind of doing some little steps, but again, that's where it's gonna be the darkest and then this front band here keeping it dark there. Now, I'm taking this and I'm my I'm back with my C5 and now I can close that hole. And you can leave white space. I can I can't get the white space back after I color, but then I can always go back and color it. And so I've got the roundness there of my hat. Now, I want to add a little bit more. And again, don't forget, I'm a, I turn my paper all the time. So I'm just coming from this side here and adding in some more strokes of color and just kind of pulling them together. Now, if I don't think I've got enough definition in there, I can go back and I would go back with probably, let me think, I have my C1 out here and a lower number will act like maybe the colorless blender. But I can come in here and I can, you can see I'm, I'm kind of removing that color. So I've left like a highlight there. So it's, it's learning to play with it. And if you need to, just do something up on the top of the paper. Um, but that's what I'm, that's gonna be my hat. Now I need to do the, the band because I've left that down here. And I'm gonna go through just lightly. And again, there's gonna be some roundness at the top there. And then this is the, again, this is my C8 marker. I'm coming in here, it's gonna be darker back down here at the back side. But then I can pull that color and again, if I don't want that much color, but I'm just barely touching that, and that gives me the roundness of the hat and the brim. Okay. So now we've got that portion done. We have the ladder. Again, I chose the E, I'm a, I love E40s, so I chose the E42. And I thought that it kind of matched with the wood tone that we have on the, uh, the backing of the card. So this is just a simple ladder. And again, you can see there isn't a line necessarily there. I drew that line to make it look, I mean, I just went down with my marker. You could choose to go over it multiple times. If you want it a little darker, you can add another level of color in there if you'd like. Um, I can go back in again. I love this E40 series. So if I choose the E43, I can come back in here and add a little bit of E43. And I am not by any means being perfect. And I think these images lend that way. And I'm just putting in that brown. And that brown could be any color. And you could make it as dark as you want. You know, you can go back. I would probably use the lighter color if I wanted to have a little bit of a shadow and just kind of shadow my, my ladder there. But I can go back in and make that ladder darker. I can continue. Because once again, if you add more layers of the same color, you are layering color. And that's one way to stretch your markers. If you don't have a lot of markers, then 
just layer that color again. So there is the ladder. And now what we have is we have our mice. And the mice are W2 with little R20 noses. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna take the, the there's a little bit of, I did a little bit in the, the ear and I put a little dot right there for the nose. Put a little dot for the nose there. Once again, these are whimsical characters. And I also did the bottoms of their feet. Okay, just to add a little bit of color there. And then what I did was I chose my W. This is where I did my, my W's. And I did the W2. And again, I didn't do much other than just a little bit here. And I came down and just did a little bit. And again, you can color these any way that you want. You can add little dots for a little bit of character. I His tail right here. And now he's laying down, so I made him relatively a little bit darker. I mean, a little bit up on his face, but left him. So there really isn't a lot, and you can always go back and add some if you'd like to. So the basic image, again, is very light. There's not much color there at all. So I have chosen on um, the background. I did a B23. And a B23, I still am not going to use my chisel end. I'm gonna use, because a lot of people like to use the chisel end for the large areas. I'm going to use my brush tip. And again, this is B23. This is where I kind of put a little bit back in here to give a little definition of some, maybe the roundness of the snowman's head, okay? And this is also where I come in here and I turn my paper and I'm pulling this color. And again, if you have to, we can just kind of come around the snowman a little bit. But this is where you really need to just figure out what the best thing for you. And it doesn't have to be um, perfect, but I'm, again, you can see I've laid my marker down. And Again, I'm taking little tiny strokes. I'm just going around the little mice. And again, those are just whiskers. They're not gonna need to be, you don't need to go around those. So I'm going around and just kind of watching around his feet. And I'm just running do want to get it pretty close to the hat and then I'm I'm gonna go this way so you can see I've laid my I know we've talked about if you've been in one of my classes this is probably one of the hardest things for people to do is to lay the marker down and do these lines but again I've tried to do these lines and just go through there. And there's, again, the sky is not going to be a, um, it's not gonna be a perfectly, I guess, clear sky. You're not gonna get it uh, totally clear. I don't mind the, the, um, the streaks. Now there's, there is another method that you could do if you don't like this you would have to be a little cautious in around the um, the images, but we've also talked about the fact that if you don't really like this particular look and you still want to texturize it, you can go in with your colorless blender and your texture towel uh, and go ahead and texturize it, but you would need to do that before anything else. You would need to to do that on the image. Now I'm gonna come back up here and again, because this is kind of a framework, I'm just going that way. Okay, so 
again, oh, you think, oh, that looks absolutely terrible. Well, it might for you to, you might know, think it looks bad. Now we can go in and we can go in with a lighter marker, which is the 21 marker. And I can come in here and I can just kind of come back and go over this a little bit, which will take some of the color away. Again, you could go in with a marker that is um, the lightest marker. Because I've chosen the B series, I could come in with a B0, and I can come in here and totally, with that marker, it's gonna work a little bit like a colorless blender, but I'm just kind of going through there. I don't think I want to do in any scribbling motion, but you can see I'm getting a little bit of texture and as it's gonna dry, it's going to pretty much pull some of that color out of there. So I'm just going in there and kind of texturizing a little bit with this, just moving my marker. And this is again, I've gone down to a B um, triple zero, but I really don't care that it's got that that whimsical look to it. You can choose about any color that you want to do this. You can make it as dark or as light as you want to. But you can see that the effect right here is that's where the, the blender is kind of m removing that color. So I don't mind that. And again, I also want to get a little bit of definition just around the the snowman. So I'm kind of pulling that out where maybe there would be a little bit of a shadow in the sky from the snowman. Um, but this is where it does not have to be perfect. Okay. So I don't mind that sky. And I've got to kind of get a couple of different colors in there. And then I don't want to do it right this second. I would like to do it later. But this is where I would take the Nuvo. And I would just take the Nuvo and go in there. Now, there are two things that I would probably do on this one. I would take my, my snow. I'd like to add some snow. You could take and make snow like this. Or you can take your uh, a white marker. I use um, either a Signo or a Jelly Roll. I just happen to have my Jelly Roll right here. And I'm going to take that and I'm just going to put in dots. So like this is snow. You could also flick snow if you like to do snow with um, like gouache or with acrylic paint and you like to flick your snow on there or if you want to do a shimmer spray, you could do a shimmer spray. Um, there's a lots of different options that you could do, but you can just come in here with the white pen and you could just lay in your snow. And I'm probably not gonna finish that because uh, you can do that. You could take your Nuvo drops and put that on top of those and then that would finish that up. So when you got done with that, you would trim this image. And I have a pair of scissors here. I would probably trim this image. I would come up here. And because this is a hand-drawn thing, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's why I, I tend to, I move my paper a little bit, is what I do. It's particularly, I get up here, and I, that's not a very, but I, I kind of emphasize the way the artist has drawn, drawn this. And then I come through here, and I just, and I just kind of squiggle my paper a little bit. And there's a little spot there that I, I can see that I got out of my, my line. I can take this colorless blender and just try to remove that little bit, but I don't think you're ever going to see it. Now, when I get down here to the bottom, I'm going to go to, I use smaller scissors, and this is what I did. You may happily just go straight across there. But because I was doing these images for the class, I chose to leave the um, artist name on there. But you can just take it off 
and I kind of go up here and I just emphasize a little bit of her name. Okay, so hopefully that was on camera there. So there's there's the image done. And that's how most of them, I've, I, I just have you hand cut those images. And I like the fact that it's on, you know, it's not really straight or anything like that. So again, what you will do is we will mount all of this. This will go on here. And again, if you choose to take the Anita Jarman name off, you could adjust it accordingly. And what I also did is I chose to have this image. There, there, there was a die for one of these, but the other ones I'm just kind of hand cutting them. And I'm just, again, they don't have to be perfect. That's what's so nice about this image. And I cut away the extra paper that I don't need, but I'm just kind of going here and making a little bit of a mark and I'm going around this best sledding ever. Doesn't that go perfect with this? And then I will mount this to this and just go over it again and it'll look like that, okay? So that's the first card. That one's out of the way, okay? And that's the largest card that we have. Now, let's go ahead and let's do this card next, okay? You will have in that, you will have top fold, and you're going to find I do top fold cards almost all the time. And do I need to kind of go out a little bit for you guys there so we can see this whole thing? So there's a top fold card. There's your image. Okay, and then that's gonna go together. I've chosen this is going to be, and you may need to do a little bit of trimming. I, When I'm doing something just a size, I hate to give you that much so you're just short, so you may wanna trim that. Um, and then this one will just leave a little, little black border. This will go underneath the image, and we will just fussy cut around that piece when we're done. Okay. So, this particular image here, super simple to do, okay? Let's go back and focus in a little bit more on that guy. So again, it's gonna be very similar. And again, you can choose to do your background first. You can choose to do uh, the snowman first. I just usually do the, the snowman part of it first. And again, what I have done on the snowman, I'm going back to the typical things I've chosen because there is no other snow on this card. I've chosen to have my snowman, my favorite snow color, which is B60. So I've chosen to have that as being the B60. And it's, it shouldn't, it's gonna be like we did the other one. I'm coming up here and kind of doing some roundness there. I am coming up. This is going to be kind of round there. We're coming over here and you can see they've kind of drawn a little bit of snow. So where that stick is for his arm, it's gonna be a little heavier and then you can just kind of come down the side. I'm gonna come over here and this side's probably gonna be pretty, pretty shadowed and a little bit under where the arm of the bunny is. And then his scarf is going to provide us, uh, you know, a little bit of shading so we can come up and kind of do this. Okay, now this is, again, because this is a very blue-white that we've, or blue-gray uh, uh, blue type of color. I can take my colorless blender because that's what the colorless blender is gonna look like. I can just soften it. I'm just kind of going around in circles. And that will help soften that color, but also blend it in a little bit and make it just kind of look, I shouldn't say lumpy snow, but kind of like lumpy snow. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our YR4. And we're gonna go and color his nose. 
okay? So he's got the YR4 and the YR9, and there's just a little bit, again, underneath. You can, you know, follow a little bit of the artist. I could leave this totally like that, or I could put a little bit more and just kind of blend them together. Okay. His hat, I chose to meet, leave his hat the same color as his scarf. And then we have his stick arms. Again, I made his stick arms E44 because I was kind of sticking to that series. You could choose any brown tone that you want of, you know, I'm, I'm just coloring the sticks. Okay? So they can be any color. And I'm just barely touching the marker and if this is too difficult for you to do with the edge of your marker if you have a pencil and it's easier you can always mix pencil and markers together so i've chosen that and i'm again i'm watching to make sure how this thing is drying do i have enough definition over here so on this particular, on the bunny, on the scarf and things, I, again, I'm a YG type of color person. So I chose my YG 41, my YG 61, and my YG 45. Now, you think, okay, those are odd colors, but those are my favorites. I chose to do the scarf and the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the scarf and I'm just going to color the scarf with the light color, which is my YG41. Okay. And this is where you have a lot of extra paper. If you want to look at your colors, you can look at what your colors are. You can, you can put them in because you're going to cut that all off, okay? And you can see that my, my 45 and this is my 61, which is a little bit more of a shadow, okay? But I'm going to take the 61 now because I, it's a little lighter, but I get another tone. And I'm going to go just around his neck with that. Okay. I may just take a little bit of a shadow where this is going to hang down there and a little bit up at the top. And then I'm going to go back with my 41 and just color that back in. I, again, this is probably much more tedious than it needs to be. Okay. Now I want to put stripes. I've chosen to put stripes on his, on his scarf. And also, because this scarf is around his neck, it's, there's nothing there. I've chosen this darker color, which is the, the YG45. Uh, I've chosen that color to just, it's going to go in his neck. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to start and we're going to do his stripes. And again, there are no stripes there, but I'm just drawing in some stripes. And just trying to kind of follow maybe what the, um, the scarf, the pattern of the scarf looks like. Okay. So down here at the bottom, the, the scarf has kind of got a little bit of a, you know, it's fabric. It's got a little bit of a, um, a bend to it. And as it comes up here, so there's my scarf. I could totally just stop that. I can come in here and add, again, if I think this needs to have just a little more color, I can add a little more color just on the bottom layer of it. I can add a little more color and you can already see that the, the, the colors of the, of the stripes are kind of disappearing a little bit. So now I can come back in here with my 41, my YG 41, and I can just, again, if I want this to, if I want the stripes to be very, I guess, undef, you know, no definition to them, if I want them to kind of just be, again, 
not as bright. I've just colored back over it and they've kind of disappeared. But it's a striped scarf. So now we're also going to do his hat. And it's so, so tiny that I'm gonna go then with my YG45 this time and just gonna add just a little bit to those areas where the hat would be bent, you know, just a tiny area. And then I'm gonna go back to the 61, which is that kind of grayer color, but I'm just gonna soften that. And that's it. And it's fine that there's a little bit of a line there. As I look at this, uh, as it's drying a little bit, I would like to take a little bit more color just in here I wanna add just a little bit, and then I wanna come back in and soften it because I wanted just a little more color on that side of my snowman, okay? And I can see I forgot to do the tassels, so I'm gonna use that darkest color, which is the 45, and I'm just going to go in here and just put a little bit of that YG 45 on the tassels of the scarf. Again, just the tippy, tippy, tippy of my marker. And don't forget the bunny's holding one. Okay. We have the bunny to do. And the bunny is going to have the same colors as the mouse hat. So I'm going to use my R20. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a bunny nose there. Um, these ears, we're not seeing the inside of the ears. So I've not done anything on the inside of these ears and you might need to do a little more than one coat on these. But again, I'm choosing to go up with my W2 on that ear and then I'm coloring that entire ear. Um, pretty much gonna color his, his two little, do you call them bunny arms? And then a little bit up here by his face and you can go in and, and again this is going to lighten up and then i'm going to color up you, you can see where the artist has kind of given you that little bit of and you can just kind of color on those areas there that have the the large artist lines and that's pretty much your bunny I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, these are so, so whimsical. So on this particular uh, image, I've chosen to do the background sky and you could leave it white if you really don't have these markers. But I've chosen to do my G, um, this is my quad. And basically I'm just coming in here with my G quad because it matches that, um, it matches the coloring of the paper that we have, which this is the paper that I chose. And again, you, it's a very small piece of paper. You could choose to do any paper that you want. But basically, this is what we're, we're going to just color very faintly. Again, this background of the sky don't forget that there's an area down here and we're going to come back under here go around here and a little bit here okay like that so there and it is so probably difficult for you to see that if there's not much color but that's okay but i can come back in here around and again, I'm using the edge of my uh, marker and I'm kind of emphasizing where there be a little bit of a shadow and like to be a little bit where this bunny is, is right here and where he's leaning back there. And again, a little bit around this snowman and I'm just, and that's why when you've got this light marker, there is, um, I use this and then um, the next color, and I don't know if it'll show up very well on camera, but then that is the, um, the, that's the 
the triple, and then this is the quad. So if I really want to have a little bit more color, I can come back in with this with the triple one, and I can come and just, again, I've got my marker laid down pretty you know flat, and I'm just flicking that around the snowman to give us a little bit of that, um, again, is it a shadow? But it is somewhat highlighting the snowman and a little bit behind the bunny. And again, I can always come back with the, uh, the double one and smooth that out. So, you know, this is, I should not the double one, the quad. Okay. So there we are on that one. On this particular one, I chose only to do, and again, I don't know if, we, if you can see that, but I chose only to put some flecks of my Nouveau glitter around it. I didn't put any snow because I didn't think they would probably show up as much. So this image, once again, this is done. It was super simple. You're just gonna cut it out and then you're going to layer it on there. So we won't go, I think you can cut that out and do any accenting that you want with glitter and then you will just take this particular uh, image and just fussy cut around the hello there. So there's that card there. So the next one, which is gonna be a little different, let's do the, um, the deer, okay? And the deer is going to have a few other colors and this one, Maybe you don't have all the colors um, with the deer, but you will have a craft card base. You're going to have the dotted piece, which says winter is not a season, it's a celebration. That's already been pre-stamped on there for you. And then you're going to have these two pieces. And then there's that. Now. Again, you can choose, I didn't talk about pop dotting or popping up images or anything. Maybe I should go back and just, I did pop up the entire mirrored part on this card and I did pop up my sentiment. On the last card we did, I, um, I, I did pop up the uh, um, aqua piece teal and then I popped up my sentiment on that. This particular one, um, I popped up the dotted piece and then everything else is flat. So I put the foam tape on this piece and left the rest of the card flat. So let's do this image here. And, uh, again, the snow is going to be uh, the, the B um, 60 ground. This is where this is going to be. Again, we're going to do our bunny the same way with our W2 and our R20. I chose for the tree, I had my E44 out for the snowman's arm, the uh, last card. So I did that. And again, any green, I believe on the green leaves, I probably use my YG61 on the leaves because there's just a few and they're just dots. Okay, and then on the deer, um, I have chosen on the deer that we are gonna do, I, I did a W3 and an E70, and you've got pieces of paper left over if you wanna try colors, and I know I've talked about this in the past, that if you have little pieces of paper, but, um, the E70 series is an interesting series because, or the E70s in general, because it has somewhat of a pink um, tone to it. And I was trying to get away from some of the grays, but again, we've talked about how we layer um, different items together. And I was playing around with laying this that if I were to layer these and color there's, that's the color I get by layering my W3 over, or my W2 over my E70. And if you can see it, I can see it a little bit that it looks like it's somewhat taking it away like a colorless blender would. 
So again, I, I, we've talked about layering and the layers that you lay. Now, if I lay on my W3 and I lay the E70 on top of it, I think it's going to, um, it, you can see that there's some, it's a little pinker, okay? So if you want it to be a little pinker. Um, you can also go, if you want a little more definition in areas, we can take then our, um, we can take our W3 and I can add some W3 to it. So I personally like adding, you know, the, the I like adding the E70 on and then putting my, um, Y, my, excuse me, my Y, my W number on top. Only reason why is I can always go back and not make it as pink, but I can add some pink into it if I want to, because this is, you know, how it was colored before. And I can add in my more of that, that E and then go back with like a little bit darker uh, W. And then I just put, use my, my white marker. And again, you could make this deer any way that you particularly want. There's really no colors, you know, on this. So what I'm going to quickly do, because this is such a quick color down here, is there's a little bit of pink on my bunny's nose. I am going to use the W2 on my bunny, okay? And again, this is pretty much dark. We're just going to kind of come down there. We're going to leave his tail. And I don't think I didn't do anything to his tail. I just left it that color. Okay. And I'm just, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a, of a dot kind of pattern on there. Like that. Okay. I didn't do anything with the snowball because that's where I went with my my Nouveau glitter and I made that a complete glitter accent on there. So I'm fine with the bunny. He's done. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we'll take the, um, the B60. I keep opening the wrong ends of my markers today. The B60 marker here. And I'm just going to, going to come in here and I've cut your page down just to help you. And you see all these lines that are in here. I'm just kind of going over all these lines that, you know, the artist has left you. Coming up in here, I'm going around the deer's feet because again, it's gonna be a little darker, some shadow where the deer is in the snow, a little bit more down here where the bunny is. And, and that's just for the appearance of the ground, okay? And as this dries, you can always, as I said, come back and put more on there. So now I'm going to do my, my tree. And again, we're just going to come in here. And if this is just, again, the, the, the tree limbs, they end. But you can go over these tree limbs very, you know, lightly with your marker as I'm just barely touching the tops of that. And again, if, if you have a different... Um, Marker, you want to do something with um, colored pencil if that's something that you think, oh, I can't get in there. And you could color everything and then come back in with a, if you were doing something that was maybe non Copic friendly, that when you did the sky, the sky might, you know, pull it. And you might want to, um, there's two ways you could do this. Um, color your sky first because then you could go right over it and you won't be dragging the brown color um, into the sky. But you can see that I just kind of went through mine and there are some white spots in there and that even make it, it looks a little bit even more like snow. So I didn't really care about that and I'm just kind of putting a little scrub on some of those limbs there. Uh, the, there's a tree underneath him here. So this is the tree. So we're coloring that. Okay. And there's this guy right over here. And so I'm just gonna kinda come up, put a little bit 
on there. Now I am going to use my YG61 and I'm just going to very careful. I, it doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just putting a little bit of green um, on those little spots that are leaves. I'm just kind of dotting them because they're going to be pretty much dead. And look, here's a couple down here. There's not going to be much color there. And I'm going to put a little bit of that. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take my, my two colors that I've chosen for the deer. I'm gonna do the E70, okay? And looking at that, that's gonna be a little bit, this is like a pretty sketchy, I'm not gonna worry about his nose because I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of a brown tone or a black one and just put some in there. I'm just coming through here and you see this leg will be darker. This leg's gonna be darker, okay? Um, a little bit more down towards the snow. Again, this is just a very sketchy drawing here. Now what we're gonna do is I'm just kind of doing a little bit of some circles. And I'm not gonna go too far up on his back because I'm gonna do that with some of the gray tones. And then I'm kind of coming in here like this. So that's what I've left that. Okay, now we're going to start with our W2. Okay, and I'm going to come back over and I'm going to just add some color here. And this is changing out. And again, if this is too much, just choose a brown tone. You could make this a very light. I mean, they're... Sometimes you see deer that are um, very, uh, they're colored where they are really very, uh, I should say, ready brown. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just coloring the top of him just a little bit so it looks a little different. And you can see I'm starting to get a little different look down here where I've added it over that more pinky brown. But again, he doesn't have to be colored perfectly. Now, if I want a little more color in here, I can go in and I can, this is my W3, and I can add a little bit more shading down in here on the belly. I can go back to his leg and make these a little bit darker. And again, I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a scribble tone there. Um, if you've really, you know, seen deer in person, they're not, this is a little bit more of that, um, E70, so I'm, I mean, that deer can be, you know, I can keep going with it, I can add more color to it, this is going back with my W2, and adding more color and just kind of following the, the shape of the deer and just kind of, I'm scribbling it around. A little definition of the ears there and his face. Okay. I am going to use my 100 or you can use a dark marker and I'm just making that a little bit different color um, of brown. Now, I, there's a little spot that looks like his mouth right there too. So there's our image. Now I have chosen for my sky, I chose a Y21, okay? So a Y21 is just kind of a, a yellow tone. And it may be a little more yellow than the paper, but I wanted a little more emphasis than that. So you could even get into some of your 50s. You could do, um, I, I think when you get into those lower numbers, you'll have to be careful with those. Um, but you might be able to use something like a, an E21 if you needed another color. This is E21. It's a little bit orangier, okay? Um, 
you might, let me see, what does E50? E50 is a little lighter and, and you might be able to use something like that also, okay? But I chose to do a little bit more of this yellow. I like the yellow tone. So what we're gonna do is, again, we have a lot of areas. So I'm, again, flicking out the, e, the Y21 out from around the deer, okay? And I can go pretty much to the edge of my paper and I'm just going in by this, you know, by the tree and pulling that color. And you can skim a little bit over those um, limbs, but I'm just kind of putting that color in there. And again, I've got some areas that there might be a little bit of a white because I don't want to go totally, but that's going to be fine. So I'm just kind of coming over these areas here and taking my marker out to the edge of the page. Okay, just a little bit around the nose. Get down here by the bunny. Again, I'm doing very flicking, okay? So we've got this area down in here by the by where the, the uh, deer under the tree that I'm just kind of catching that. I'm flicking off, and then this is the area where there's the snow. And I may have to work on this just a little bit here. Okay. Coming down in here, a little bit around that plant that's still living. I'm gonna flick a little bit off around the deer and the bunny, okay? So it's, again, it's a very sketchy sky and that's perfectly fine. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take our marker here and we are going to take and we're going to put, I'm going to put these, the, the spots for the deer. This kind of makes it a little bit of a fawn, but we're going to put the spots for the deer and they could possibly, again, that could make it a little bit, um, brighter brown tone, if that makes sense to you. Okay. So we've got the deer. And then what I did was I put, again, some snow in the sky. You can put as much as you want, but I just put dots in the sky. And I will, would finish that, and then I would take this, and I would take my glitter, and I would put, again, you can see there's a bunch of glitter in the snow. And if you look at this and you think, okay, before you put the glitter on there, you may think, well, I, I think there needs to be a little bit more definition. Come back in here and scribble in a little more definition under these items. Because once again, it's dried and we can actually put a little more definition in that before we put our, our glitter or our Nouveau drops on there. Okay, so I would nouveau, I would put a little bit of glitter drop on his snowball and then in the sky and just finish that up. So that pretty much finishes that card up and then you just mount that. So we are moving right along. The next card that we have is super simple okay it's this particular card here so what you're going to have is um, you'll have like your uh, your actual piece of um, this is for my sample here got kind of a stack of cards here uh, you will have a have a snow happy day and that's been stamped and it's been die cut and then you'll have a 
uh, piece of mylar that you can just put that on and just kind of fussy cut around that, okay? And in this card, you have a wood grain background for the top fold card. I'll kind of zoom out here for you. Then you've got a snow background and you're going to have a hill that's in um that's in your uh piece i was trying to find a piece that wasn't put together here for you here it is so this is a piece of vellum so you've got more sense. These two pieces here, you've got this that we're going to color, and you've got your these backgrounds. So these guys go together like this, and I did not cut this because I figured you could, it would give you um, a little more flexibility, but I cut this piece. Now, I was going to show you on this one, you know, I used a little bit of eighth inch uh, score tape and you can barely see because it's going to be covered up with the image. They make vellum tape runner. You could use um, dot runner just and you could just actually barely tack it up here and then this would be covered. So again, that's the vellum on that part. So that's going to go on top of here. Okay, then you've got this image that we're going to color and your image is going to look like that. So I wanted an up snow, an up and a, a top kind of area there. And then you can cut this off wherever you want that to be. Okay, and then you've got the snow happy day, which I did. Yeah, I put mine down further. You can put it wherever you'd like it to be. And I use pop dots. Okay. And then I also put the Nouveau drops in a lot of these snowflakes. And you probably can't see them very well, but there are some Nouveau drops in the snowflakes. And then we put the Nouveau, or you could put glitter down here. So this is probably one of your fastest colors that there is. I mean, it's super, super fast and super, super easy. So this is my bunny image. And we're going to color him once again with, I'll show you this guy. We're going to color him with the W2, little pink nose. I did put a little bit of B60 on the snowball and his tail, and you could put glitter on that. And then we just did the bottom down here. And, and that's where you're just going to kind of draw in the... Um, the ground a little bit because this is all you have and i'm just i'll go ahead and zoom back in for you guys let me see if i can do this as if i moving my camera the wrong way here okay so we're gonna go in and i'm just kind of taking that and drawing that line and then i'm just kind of coming in and this is going to Pretty much, it'll it'll kind of disappear a little bit, okay? But then we've got that. Bunny, once again, he is going to be on our W2. I'm going to give him that R20, just kind of little dot on the nose there. And so we're coming in with the W2 and just kind of coloring around. He's got a little foot down there. It's a little bit up here around his head. And I kind of dot it. His arms. And a little bit down here. Just barely. Not much color at all. We're going to go back and we're going to put a little bit of B60 just on his little bunny tail and up here on the snowball. And that's it. This image is done you can come back if you think you need a little bit uh more v60 at the bottom of that and that is done other than putting some little nouveau drops on that or glitter or you don't have to do anything at all so 
that bunny is done. We are down to the last card. So this is our last card. And you will have a piece of glitter. You'll have your background piece. And this one, I actually uh, just popped up the background piece and the sentiment. Here is your image, your card base. So it is going to go like this. So we have your card base. We have the backer piece. We have the glitter piece. This is going to be colored and put on there. And then you've got your sentiment, which you're going to cut out. So we are going to color. And again, this image being colored is probably not going to be much different than things that you've done in the past again is we are going to make this snowman. He's going to be the, the B60 color is what he's going to be. And so I'm coming in here and I'm just kind of scribbling a little bit under his hat, trying to make a little bit of roundness on his face. And again, underneath here and there, okay? And then underneath his scarf, I'm doing a little bit here, here, and a little here. This is where I'm going to, again, do this nice blend. And I'm going to use my um, colorless blender. And I'm going to colorless blend all of that together. And I've lost my colorless blender on my desk. And I'm looking for it. And it looks like it's nowhere to be found. So, oh, I found it, finally. Going in here, colorless blender, and I'm just kind of almost coloring his entire face. And then I'm gonna come in here and go from there, okay? Now what we're gonna do is his, uh, no, his carrot. Again, his carrot is a long carrot. It's gotta be long for that bunny to hang on to. And then I'm going to use the YR09. I'm just kind of following those lines up. Then I'll kind of go back in with, these, with the 04 and just... Again, I don't care if there's some little lines in there, okay? Then what we have is we're going to do his, we'll do his hat since we're up there. Again, we use the C5 and we use the C9. Those were our colors before. So this hat is going to look about the same way, but actually I've kept it where the shadow is only kind of on this back side of it. And then his brim. So I've just, I've kept it that way. So again, that was a C5, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna do this C8. And again, I'm coming and I'm just kind of framing that out, and then I'm flicking that color. And again, as I said, you can't take the color away, but we can always add color. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go the rest of the way because this will be kind of highlighted as the sun or the, the light is headed that way. And I'm just trying to kind of put that blend in there. Because I want it to look black, but again, I'm using my C5 as a gray tone to, to make it look that way. And then I'm going to come back up here and do that. And you definitely get definition from the hat and the fact that it's darker and it's on at that angle, okay? So I'm satisfied with the hat. And his, his body is actually, you know, it's what I would say, melling out the, the colorless blender and the, the bee um, has kind of mellowed out a little bit. I might come back in here and mellow that one corner, but it looks fine. 
Uh, while that kind of is drying, let's go over and do the, the bunny again. He's going to have just a little pink nose, okay? I'm going to just do a little bit of pink on the bottom of that little foot that's hanging there. Just to add it to something different. W, we're going to do our W2. And he's hanging on. There's the little arms. There's a little bit of a shadow here from his face. This ear. And, and it, it almost looks like we're seeing the edge of the inside of maybe his ear. So we can put a little pink on that ear. Just again to change it up a little bit. And I'm going to go right over it. Now he's going to be a little darker here under his chin. Just I just kind of scribble those little areas that the artist has given me. And around the bunny tail. And I'm just kind of popping in a little bit of dots. Okay. Bunny's done. Now... I chose again to stick in um, his scarf. I, I did the BG series. Um, just a little bit more of a, a bluish green. He could have a green scarf, but I chose to do the BG 11, 13, and 15. It's not going to take a lot of that but I'm going to um, color the, and I, I missed some snowman, and I'll show you that after I get done doing the scarf. That I'm just going to color his, his scarf in. And then these, the, the 13 and the 15, or I'll, I'll lay them out right here, that this is the 13. So this was... 11, that's 13, and then this is 15. So there's a lot of dark right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my dark, my darker color, which is the 15, and I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness around some of these areas here. I just a very little. I'm going to take and emphasize a couple of those lines that the artist has given me. Then I'm going to go back to the 13, and these. when you look at these color caps, you think, well, that's just wrong, but they're, they're very little difference in them. And I'm going to extend that line just a little further, emphasize it back from where it would be, and then I'm going back in with my BG11 and just kind of finishing that off. A little bit and just blending that a little bit more okay I think I want to give a little bit more definition just to the scarf up here at the top which is fine like that and then I'll just kind of blend that in Now, what I did see when I did this is I missed the spot right here under his chin, which is, that's kind of a chin area, I guess, underneath the snowman. So I've just gone in there and I've done that. If I left, you know, you can put a little bit of a gray if you wanted to. You see one on the tail uh, to make that be a little bit more of uh, another color from the bunny, just make it white, but it doesn't, it's not necessary. And again, you can do whatever you want with um, the bunny to see if uh, you want him to be a sparkly tail or not. So the last thing we have to do is the uh, background sky. When this is a color you may not have, it's a very nice, I like this color a lot. But it because of the blueness of the, um, I was trying to get a little bit of a blue and also to match the background paper that we have here. Some of my blues were a little bit too blue. So what I chose is I have a BG90. And you can say this is really a grayish tone, but it really kind of goes well with the paper choice. 
So again, I'm just going in here and doing the, the same thing that we've done, laying my marker down, just kind of scribbling in a background here of color. And you be a little careful when you get around the black hat. And then I'm just kind of scribbling this away. Now, he this this particular color is um, it's a great background color. It's just a nice, it's called gray sky, but it kind of has a green gray look to it. And then what I'm gonna go back and do is I'm going to take my G quad zero. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to lay that G quad zero in on top of it just to get me a little bit of that green or blue color in the background just to add a little bit more color. And it isn't going to totally match um, the blue sparkle paper that I have. But what it's doing is it's going to help blend the two, the background paper and the sparkle paper together. And again, I'm just, again, I've laid my, my image this way because this is just where it's easier for me to color. So, I've got that, which is pretty close to my background paper. And it's very light. You can go a little bit more color if you'd like. Once again, I went in with my white marker, my, my, my white pigment marker, your Signo, whatever you're using, and I put snowdrops on there. And, and if you can see, there you can see, I, and I put a little sparkle on top of them. So that was the sparkle that was in this particular card. You can see that I, even though I covered, they were white, but you kind of cover them, but you don't have to. So that's this particular card. And then you're just going to cut this image out. Once again, you can choose to leave the Anita Jarman signature in there or you may cut it off. It's totally up to you. You have a big enough square and then you might, you could always pull your square and, and, and uh, cut it off if you want it to be even. But again, this is kind of a, a very whimsical drawn line. So I cut it accordingly. So I hope you enjoyed this class. Um, if you have any questions at all, let me get a business card right quick. And you can, whether this helps you and whether you can read this or not, but Design Inventions, Nancy McClellan. I do have a, my, my, um, I can get it back up here again for you. Nancy at designinventions.com. My number is 319-533-5984. You can email me. You can text me. You can call Scrap Mania if you have any questions, and I would be happy to answer them. So I know this video is like, you know, about an hour and a half. Hopefully, uh, though, you got the information you needed. And if you need any questions answered, just give me a call. Thanks for joining me for class.